Aloha and welcome to this week's TerraFlow hosted by the Yoga Collective. My name is Liz Arch and I teach Primal Yoga here at the Yoga Collective in Santa Monica. And my Primal Yoga classes are a blend of yoga and martial arts. So today I thought it would be fun to take you through a little sequence that blends these two art forms together. And the sequence is really going to focus on building incredibly strong, powerful legs. And we'll also work on lengthening, stretching out the legs as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get started in a really fundamental martial arts stance called horse stance. So with feet about hips width distance, we're gonna step the feet wider, so about twice, double that distance. And we're gonna sink down deep into the legs. Toes are pointing straight ahead, so we want feet parallel and back nice and long. So shoulders stacked right over the hips. We wanna avoid leaning forward or tucking the butt out. So nice, neutral pelvic position, straight back. This stance is used for building incredible conditioning in your legs. It's been said that the Shaolin monks would hold this stance for hours, but lucky for you guys, we're only gonna hold it for about eight breaths. So drawing the hands in, making tight fists, broadening through your collarbones. We're gonna draw the shoulder blades toward one another and just settle in. Start to feel the strength of the legs and just start to deepen the breath here. And then once you've hold, uh, held the pose for a few breaths, we're gonna straighten out the legs and we're gonna turn this into some double blocks to work into the thighs even more. So we'll bend into that left knee, keep the right leg nice and straight. We wanna glue the outer edge of the foot down into the earth. You wanna avoid peeling up the outer edge of the foot because that can put some pressure on the knee. So really stamp that foot down. Left arm blocks up, right arm blocks down. Palm is facing up on the left hand, palm is facing down on the right hand. Strong arms. We inhale through the middle, coming back through horse stance, arms cross, exhale, block on the opposite side. Inhale through the middle, exhale, block. So we'll just flow through side to side. Our breath here is short, sharp exhalations out through the mouth. So slightly different than yogic breathing. We're gonna hold here, stick the butt out, place the palms down on the floor, hands are shoulder width distance, fingers are spread, and we're just gonna sink into this, it's called the drop stance, a little deeper. So on the exhale, we'll bend deeply into that left leg, holding here, Inhale up the middle and exhale, dropping into the right leg. So again, notice that I'm keeping the outer edge of the foot firmly sealed on the mat. Inhaling back to center and exhale, opposite side. So we'll pulse through a few of these. really starting to warm up the legs. And then we'll hold again on the left side. Lengthen onto your fingertips, flatten out the back. We're gonna turn it into a move that is adopted from Chinese martial art style called pigua. So this form uses a lot of circular motion with the arms, a lot of chopping, and in this Context, we're gonna use it again just to really strengthen, lengthen the legs, getting into the adductors, getting deep into the groins, um, and opening up the shoulders. So we're gonna sink it down. We're gonna count it out first, starting off slow. Chest shifts forward, butt shifts back. Arms extend out to the sides, nice and straight. We use the power of the legs to support the torso. We're gonna sweep the right arm toward the left leg and hold here in position one. Arms come straight up and down, two. We're in a nice deep horse stance. Arms out to the sides, three. Arms up and down, four. 
Shifting the weight into the right leg, five. Left hand sweeps the floor, six. Moving back in the opposite direction, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Once we have that down, we're gonna put it into a flow, inhaling, exhaling. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Now that we've really warmed up the legs, we can take a deeper stretch. We'll push the palms out. This time we'll turn the right toes up so we can release the sit bones toward the floor. Feel free to hold here, but stay attentive to your knees. So if you feel anything in your knees, you can always come out of the pose, back off. If your knees feel okay, you can go deeper by creating a little wrap. So we can wrap the left arm around the knee, right arm behind the back, connecting the fingers, and then we'll go for length here. Peel that right shoulder open and lengthen your spine. Hold for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, we'll release. Come through the middle and switch sides. Pull the left heel up, sinking down. Again, being attentive with your knees, taking it to your own degree. I'm working up a sweat. If you'd like to take the wrap, left arm behind the back, peel that left shoulder open, find a little length in your spine. Make sure the left toes are pointing straight up, left knee reaches up toward the sky. And then gently release, come back to center. We'll take the hands to the hips, rise up. Make sure those feet are parallel. Take a nice big inhale, then exhale, folding forward from the hips. We'll move into Prasarita Padottanasana. Lengthening out, then walking the hands back so they're in line with the soles of the feet. As you exhale, crown of the head lengthens toward the floor. We wanna lift through the inner arches here Firm the quadriceps to create a reciprocal stretch in the hamstrings. And this is just a really great pose to lengthen the entire posterior kinetic chain. So it lengthens into the back, into your hamstrings, into your calves. So we'll hold here for a few breaths. And then on an inhale, pressing up, pressing into the feet, taking the hands to the hips, firming the belly. We rise all the way to standing. You can just toe heel your feet together and make your way into Tadasana Mountain Pose. So now that we have your legs nice and warm and we've broken down the technique step by step, I'm going to put it together in a little flow for you and show you how I would incorporate these moves into my class into a seamless vinyasa flow. So if you're practicing this at home, you would do the same sequence on the left side to balance yourself out. And that's it. My name is Liz Arch. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Namaste.